Welcome to our latest edition of SOMA. Today we'll be looking at Hebrews chapter 3, verses 3, 7 to 11. And the main idea we seek to bring across is the relationship between God and man. And so I read, Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as in the rebellion on the day of testing in the wilderness, where your fathers put me to the test and saw my works for forty years. Therefore, I was provoked with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. And so in order to get the main idea, uh, we look for words that repeat. And for us, in this case, we have the words you his, uh, uh, we see your, your, um, my, this is as denoting God that this is his first person, the first person pronoun for God. There are even certain versions that capitalize the, the first person pronouns for God. Every time we know it's God speaking, they capitalize it to in order for us to be well aware that it's actually God who is speaking. Uh, there, so there is I as well. There is they, there is there, they uh, rather, they again, my, and my again. Again, my, they, my rest. And so uh, this is denoting or bringing across the idea of the relationship between God and man. And how is this relationship being brought about? It's brought about mainly through response. First, the response from man. How does man respond to God or how should man respond to God so we see this de brought across through words like you hear his voice do not harden your hearts do not be like these people who tested God that's how that man should respond by not being like those who responded in a negative manner and so this that is man's response we see man's response in um, verses 7 to 9 and then from verse 10 and 11 we see God's God's response we see him say that because man responded, responded in such a way that he was provoked with them, that they went astray, so he was provoked with them. And so he swore in his wrath that they would not enter his rest. So that's God's response. And so let's get into it. And so first of all, before that, the author from here, we see through the quotes, is actually quoting an Old Testament scripture. We already know that Hebrews is addressed to the Israelites. And so they have knowledge of the Old Testament should be vast. And so they would be aware of what the author is quoting to them. But for us, uh, the specific po portion of scripture is Psalm 95 verses 7 to 11. And so the other is quoting Psalm 95, 7 to 11 to bring across this point and something that will actually continue from verse 12 because from verse 12 all the way to chapter 4, verse 13, he'll be essentially expositing on 
Psalm 95 verses 7 to 11. So today we'll be introducing it, but from now on we'll simply be looking at what the author will be saying concerning Psalm 95 verses 7 to 11. And so he begins, therefore, again as we've been seeing, therefore builds on what is essentially used to build on what someone has said. So as I say, therefore this, it's because I've said other words before that. And so this is what is in response or is what I'm to do or you are to do in regards to the words I've just said previously. And so therefore is building on what we saw in verses 1 to 6, that Christ is greater than Moses. So as verse 1 said, we are to consider Christ because he's greater than Moses. And because he's greater than Moses, we are to act as Moses did and be faithful. Act in faith. Be faithful in all God's house, just like Moses was. And so that's building up. That's the therefore here, because that therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, what the other is doing here, we already, as I've said, we already know, uh, as I will say rather, we already know that um, David authored Psalm 95. He is the one who wrote Psalm 95. But the other here attributes the authorship of Psalm 95 to the Holy Spirit, which builds on the notion that the Holy Spirit is actually the author of Scripture, that he authored it through men that as we know men from different cultures from different times that they wrote the scriptures but all had a through line because that through line was by the inspiration of the holy spirit it's actually only one time in his in this letter to the hebrews that the other will attribute um uh, authorship to a human and that is to David when he actually expounds on this Psalm 95 especially verse 11 on the rest of God and so that's the only time here in the Hebrews that he attributes authorship to a human but every time other time he uh, quotes or the Old Testament he attributes the authorship to the Holy Spirit and so therefore when the uh, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if we hear his voice, uh, this is means that how are we to respond to Christ's greatness? We are, this is what it means to hear his voice. Today, if you hear his voice, we are to not harden our hearts. We are to be, we are not to, this is man's great sin that they think of themselves as God. So when God speaks through his word, as we know today from this, his voice is his word, Hebrews, that in these last days he speaks to us via his son. And as we know from John 1.1, 1, 1, the son is God's word. And so we see that man's great sin is not heeding God's word. That was from the very beginning of time. We saw that with the fall, Adam and Eve, they did not heed God's word. They hardened them, their hearts to him. And so they rebelled. For us, we are being exhorted by the other. Do not rebel. We are being encouraged. Do not rebel. Do not be like Adam and Eve. Or in our case here, in our context, do not be like the Israelites of old the fathers of the Hebrews he was writing to, the other was writing to, do not be like them who hardened their hearts. They, they instead of looking to God, they saw all the great things that God did from the Red Sea to the making water, making water come out of a rock, the manna that flew, fell down from heaven, the quails that fell down from heaven. We know all the miracles, the, the defeats of the enemies because of God's power, how Moses' arms in Exodus 17 were raised up so that they defeated the Amal Amalekites. So they had all that. They saw all of God's power and yet rebelled against him again and again, repeatedly, whether it be the golden calf, whether it be complaints. And even here, the other here is actually 
this is quoted in Psalm 95, 7 to 11, and David there in Psalm 95, 7 to 11, especially here as in the rebellion, is speaking to the, when the Hebrews complained against God in Meribah. This is the Septuagint translation of the of the Old Testament. That's the Greek translation of the Old Testament. And so there is not the word Meribah. But when you read Psalm 95, 7 to 11 in the Hebrew translation, there is the word Meribah. And we know what happened in Meribah. They complained there. And so the other is saying, they put God to the test, even despite seeing everything that God had done for them. And so how does God respond? He was provoked with them. He was angered by them. He was angered by them. And so in his anger, he says they always go astray. They choose their own paths. They harden their hearts. They, they, they have told them by ways, but they don't care for it. And so what does he say? He swears in his wrath, in his just wrath, he swears they will not enter his rest. This rest, essentially, we shall see in the other's exposition of it, means eternity. It's looking to eternity. And the way he does this is by, that's why he attributes authorship to David, by saying if David, if Joshua gave the people of Israel rest, then... David would not have prophesied of it 400 years later. And so we see that if you respond with hardness of heart to God, what does God do? He will not allow you to see him, to be with him forever. That the, the quote in Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30 will not be true of you, that come all who are weary and heavy laden and I'll grant you rest. It won't be true of you because you won't know him. You will not care for him. But the reverse is true for those who hear his voice, that he promises that you will enter his rest. So my plea to you is look to him as verse 1 to 6, 8, consider him so that you may enter his rest. Let us pray. Gracious King, Lord of all, we are grateful for this reminder, for this encouragement by the author of Hebrews here, and may it work deeply in our hearts so that we may enter your rest. We may not fall short, but be, pay very close attention so that we, we, will, we will be with you forever. Amen. Amen.